video. Touch the button at the uh, yeah at the bottom. There you go. Yep. Jeff McManus spends his days cultivating and growing great landscaping on the beautiful campus of Ole Miss. He is a certified grounds manager, certified arborist, a graduate from Auburn University in landscape and ornamental home horticulture. Jeff Lee's school is an opportunity to learn how to excel in individual achievements by studying hard, applying ourselves, and being driven to make the things less. Good skills to have, but he is interested in how those skills translate to success in any level. You ask Jeff, what is the secret to making Ole Miss a destination landscape location? He would say it's actually more about the people who make the landscape. That is our unique process for cultivating and growing our people. Inspiring employee engagement, developing skills, and rewarding efforts. That's why Forbes Magazine, Facilities Executive, Huffington Post, Sports Field Turf, and others have cited Jeff's work. Since the year 2000, the Ole Miss landscape staff, affectionately known as Weeders, have become leaders on the national stage by winning five landscaping national championships from such organizations such as Newsweek, Princeton Review, TGMS, and USA Today. Jeff will share his process for achieving five-star results every day, personal or professional. At the end of the day, there should be one and the same. Please join me in welcoming Jeff McManus. All right. Thank you. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? All right. Well, I understand y'all are some of the best of the best. Is that true? Cream of the crop. Okay. It's all, you always wonder, like, uh, well, is that a trap question? Because if I say we are, then maybe the, my ego might get in the way and he might make me stand up. Okay. But listen, I'm glad you're here. You're a big reason why I'm here. Uh, we actively work very hard every day to recruit people like you to Ole Miss, the best of the best. Uh, what you're going to become, what you're going to do in life, really how you're going to change the world in a positive way uh, affects us and how we do our work. You see, we can, we can grow plants anyway and we can grow trees anyway, but when we can really put it together where it's attractive, and when you drove here on campus for the very, 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 very first time, we wanted you to fall in love with it. We wanted you to emotionally connect. And so hopefully, gosh, I'm getting emotional about it. You know, it's crazy talking about landscaping and getting emotional. Uh, hopefully your, your people who brought you here, that when you got here, you said, this is home. This is where I want to be. Now, some of you didn't have a choice. Your, your guardians or your parents made you come here, so you didn't have a choice, I understand. But we really want you to be here. And we active, I came here 20 years ago and had a, a, great, had a great run, had a great time in Oxford. But let's talk a little bit about the, your, uh, your opportunity for being here. And so let's go through some fun facts. And I'm sure you may, or may have heard some of these, but a bachelor degree holders are half as likely to be uh, unemployed as their peers who only have a high school degree. And they will make uh, one million in additional earnings on the average of their lifetime. You see, a college degree is a great investment. It'll, it'll literally, literally pay off for you. Um, in 2019, the median income for recent graduates reached a 44,000 a year for a bachelor's degree holders ages 22 to 27. For higher school graduates, uh, the same age, the median uh, earning was around 30,000. So you can already see a difference in the average salary and starting. Uh, it's interesting to see too that a bachelor's degree holders 47% more likely to have health insurance, and 74% of that was paid by the employer. So it does pay to invest in yourself. Also, uh, when you're weathering the economic downturn, the jobless rates uh, at the peak of the Great Recession, 15% young workers with just a, with a school degree versus 5% who are holding a bachelor's degree. So there's a little bit more 
job security. And then when you look at the overall return on investment, lifetime earnings uh, for the level of education, this is an interesting statistic. I don't know if you can see it that well. It's maybe a little blurry to you up there. Your eyes are young, though. You probably can zip right in there and look at that. But if the top line, the average high school uh, degree person will earn about $1.3 million a year. And you look as it goes through each, each uh, educational cycles gains more and you look at the bottom advanced degrees almost double to $2,671,000. So it's a big, big difference. Do you, based on what I've just told you, do you think it pays to have a college degree? Yeah. It, it, it can, it can. Is it a guarantee? No. Interaction, okay? Let's have a little talking. It's okay if you talk. You can go to sleep too if you want to put your head down, take a little nap. I won't call on you. I won't, I won't, I won't bother you. So either way is fine. Uh, don't fall asleep though and drool through your, through your mask. It's kind of embarrassing. So just put your head down. Uh, but how many of you feel like in the course of four or five years, ever how long it takes you to get through school, in my case, six, uh, how, long, how long do you think it'll take to get your ROI on your education? And you say, well, I'm got a scholarship. You still, you're still paying something. You're still paying something. You're paying time. You're investing your life into this. You could be out earning income right now, but you're investing in yourself. How long do you think it'll be before you can pay or you'll get your ROI, your return on these four years. Somebody give me a guess. How long do you think it'll take before you'll pay, you'll earn enough money to pay for these four years? You think it'll take one year? How many of you think it'll take one year? How many of you think five years or less, five or less? Okay, how about 10 or less? Okay, how about 15 or less? 20? Some of you are like, yeah, I don't know. I have no clue what you're even talking about. Yeah, but so the, 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 thought, the thought process is, is you're investing in who right now? Who are you investing into? Yourself. You can say it out loud, okay? This is you. Yourself. You're, invo you're investing in yourself. Now, uh, I think everybody in here has a scholarship, and if I'm not mistaken, everybody has a mentor. When I went through college, I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have a scholarship. So congratulations, you're a lot smarter than I am, okay? Why in the world would this women's council go through the heartache, go through the challenge to create a program, to develop funding, and then go out, hire a, a, a great director over the service, and then go around and find mentors for every one of you. Why in the world would people do that? So I need feedback. You got to tell me. I don't know. I don't go. I'm not a part of this program. So I need some interaction. You can pull your mask down and, and say it, but I would really appreciate it if you could tell me why do you think some of the, why do you think they're doing this? Okay. Okay. Was that a question or a statement? Okay, good. Good. I like that. What else? Yes. I was going to say that they believe in us. Okay. That we can be leaders. Did everybody hear what she said? That was really good. Oh, thank you. Okay. What else? What else? Why else do they invest? Why else? They believe in you. And can, say, say again what you said. They want you to do well. They want you to do well. Why? Okay, this is for everybody. That's a good statement. Why do they want you to do well? If you do well, won't it take more away from them? Well, no, when we do well, they also do well because they can say, hey, we produced this person. We, you know, fostered them through college. And then hopefully they invest into us so that we can reinvest back into them. And, you know, it's kind of a cyclical process. Okay, so if you do well, they do well. I like the statement, but if you don't mind, and I'm not trying to embarrass you, I want to drill down on that. How? How? And everybody can jump in on this. This is an all play. How 
Do you make them successful? If you're successful and you said you make them successful, are you, are you going to make them a lot of money? How are, you going to, how are you going to make them successful who are helping fund this program? Yes. Okay, who's in, what's the balloon? What's the balloon? Okay, of who? Yes. Okay, so to, to, to summarize what she said is, y'all were flowers, okay? And y'all were blooming. And that's their, that's a big part of their, their payoff. What, did somebody else have another, another one? Did I see a hand while ago? Because these were good. So the, 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 the important point is somebody's taking enough time to invest in you. You know that, right? Now, there are other people in your lives right now who've invested in you. I want you to tell me who those are. Who are some other people who've invested in you? Go ahead. Your family. Good. Who else? Your friends. Okay. Who else? Your teachers. All right. Who else is investing in you? Coaches. Big time for me. Coaches were huge for me. Professors were big for me. Parents were big for me. All right, anybody else? Got anybody else invested in you? Who else? Any aunts and uncles, cousins, pastors? Yeah? Okay. Now, how, most, I guess the average age in here is probably 18 to 24, somewhere in that range, okay, for the students, okay, not for us other people who are maybe a little bit different, okay. You're young. Who have you invested in? Okay. Who have you invested in and how? Now, this is not a guilt trip. I'm just, it's a paradigm, hopefully a little shift. Believe it or not, you, and some of you who've got brothers and sisters and you're the oldest or in the middle or whatever, you know this is true. Some people are looking up to you. People are watching you. Now, Trust me, nobody's going to walk up to you and go, wow, I'm looking up to you. You know, they don't do that. But they're watching you. And as you get older, as you become wiser and you become uh, more invested in your family, your career, and your community, you're going to have opportunities to invest in others or to ignore others. And you, you'll have the choice. And so don't forget what's been given to you. You've been given a, a great gift. And, and, and I, love, I love the Ole Miss Women's Council. It's because they're investing in others. They're looking for unique ways to do it. I got to be a mentor a couple of years ago with, with uh, a gentleman here. So it was one of the best experiences I had you know, got to be a part of. But do you know how often I've thought about, man, I wish I had a mentor. I wish I had that mentor. And when you get out of school, guess where you have to go find the mentors and guess who has to find them? Yeah, we do. I did. I had to find my own mentor. And I did. I found, I've gotten several mentors. And right now, don't underestimate the value that mentor is putting in your life. And I would encourage you, I'm sure y'all are doing things like this. I don't, I don't know the day-to-day -day of how y'all do things. But, but send them a text and just tell them thanks. Send them a text and say you appreciate the time because, th trust me, they are extremely busy. If they're doing this, they're doing other things too. And so they're taking the time because they see the value in this program. And so it's always good to be appreciated and say thank you. And it helps us be, be, become better leaders when we so, show gratitude to those who've invested in us. That makes sense? Good. So none of, that was, none of that was part of my talk today, but I thought I'd just share that with you, okay? So belief, you mentioned belief, that people believed in you. Now, some of, I'm very fortunate, and I don't know if you'll ever be the fortunate as I am, that I get to work with some of the best hardworking people in the, in the county, 
in the city, in the state, and in, the, in this country. I work with some of the grittiest, toughest, resilient people in the world. That's the landscaping, airport, and golf course services. And the reason I say that is because they work outside, they work in the elements, they work around ticks and fleas, poison ivy, they get to drag deer, dead deer off the road. You know, they get to do all the fun stuff that you, you would just aspire to be, right? And they're cutting grass and they're pulling weeds and they're doing all these things. But one day you may get the great opportunity to do that. You may get to be a leader with other people. You see, in school, your success comes pretty good. You see, I, I did something crazy over Thanksgiving. I signed up for a graduate class. Lord of mercy, 57 years old and going back to school. I got out of school when I was 24. It's been a long time. Blackboard, I hate it, okay? <laughs> I hate Blackboard. It's a curse from, from the devil. I mean, I'm telling you, it's, it's bad. And it's t my sons, I've got four boys. They all four going through school and they're laughing at me just like you did. I said, don't worry, Dad, after about two weeks, you'll get it. And they were right. And I'm trying to figure out how to navigate. And, and, and y'all are going to think this is funny, but I had to write a thousand word, um, I don't know, it was the discussion. It wasn't really a paper, it was a discussion. Y'all had to do any of those? Okay, when I got to 2,000 words, I had to stop. And I had to start deleting. See, the good thing about when you get old like me, you got more to say. It's easier. You're not saying, oh my gosh, I got to get 200 more words. You're trying to figure out how to delete it. So it's just going to come. But I'm going through the challenge right now of trying to get through school, trying to do that class, trying to figure it out. And that's how your individual success is measured, by your grade. And you decide, you decide what grade you make because of the effort you put into it. I'm probably way off your camera, aren't I? Where's your, am I off your camera? I'm sorry, I probably should stand right here for your camera. So how about when you get put into the workplace and then you're in charge of a group of people? Now, the great thing about a university and a school experience like this is you get the education, you get the knowledge. But one of the things that unfortunately falls a little bit short is how to lead people. Now, how many of you have worked in group projects before in, in this kind of, you know, academic setting, yeah? Show of hands, it's super easy to do, okay? Let me see your hands. If you thought that group project was super easy, raise your hand, okay? If you thought it was kind of difficult, raise your hand. Okay, those who got your hand up, why was it difficult? Just... Yeah. They didn't do any work. Uh oh, hold on to that. Okay. So, you had to do most of the work. What was some, what was some more hands? What else? Oh, communication. If everybody could just read my mind, it'd be so much easier. What else? What else? What other frustrations did you have? We got not doing the work and communication. What? Ooh, say that again so everybody can hear you. Right. Not everybody has the same mindset. Okay, you're the leader. You're in charge. You've got 25 people working for you today. And for the next, you know, however how long your career is going to be. How do you motivate them? How do you motivate them? Do you impress them with your good looks? Okay. Do you impress them with your grades? Do you walk in and put your degree up on from University of Mississippi and you impress them with your degrees? Do you come in and you kind of strut and say, I'm the boss. Respect me. Do what I say. What do you do? How are you going to get people to go along with you? You were talking about it's frustrating. I mean, it's frustrating when people don't come along and do their work. Anybody got any thoughts? Yes, sir.
great answer. Are you, have you got to do some leadership in your, early in your life? Good. I can tell that was good. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So both of you had a key word. You, you said it. You added on to it. And it started with an R. Say it again. You said it. Relationships. Building relationships. She said she'd get everybody together. Okay. That's one of the keys for your success is the relationship you have with your workers. Okay. Now, it doesn't mean, doesn't mean that you're going to, you know, hug each other all the time and we're going to hold hands. Okay. But they need, they, you're going to build that relationship for respect. One of the key ways I'm going to give you a secret right here that's been very successful for me and here at Ole Miss in our national championship drive is belief. You've got to believe in your people. You've got to believe in your people. And let me tell you, that sounds easy, but when they call in sick and they don't do the work and they're hiding from you and they're dumpster diving and they're asleep in the truck and they're looking for deer, it's not easy to believe in them. You have to be the bigger person. You have to think big. You've got to think about why you're here. So you have to believe in them. You don't have to, but it sure makes a big difference. Because when you believe in them, you show in trust. And when you can trust your people, even when they let you down, it makes a huge, huge impact. This gentleman right here, how many of you have ever heard of Dr. Robert Kayat, who used to be the chancellor here? All right, good. A lot of hands. Good. Dr. Kayat is retired now, but the reason I'm at Ole Miss is because of Dr. Kayat. He invested in me. He's the, he was the chancellor. He's the, you know, the, big, the big boss here. He, he did everything. You know, he was over everything. What was very unique about Dr. Kayat is he was very, he was that, what's that R word? Relationship driven. He was very relationship driven. Now, he had the pedigree. He had the the, the law degree, and he was the doctor. He, he did what you're doing right now. He got those things done, but he took it to the next level. He started believing in Ole Miss before Ole Miss believed in herself. He knew that Ole Miss was different, and he knew that Ole Miss was not who people tried to say she was. He said, yes. There's been mistakes, but that's not who we are now. Going forward, this is who we are. And he led humbly. Dr. Kayat would walk the campus most mornings, and he would stop, and he would bend over, and he would do things that you wouldn't think a chancellor would do, these menial tasks. What do you think he would do? What was it? He was picking up garbage. Holy cow. The chancellor, the guy who wears the suit and tithe, why in the world? And this is a question to you. I need some, your input. Why would the top of the organization take it upon himself to walk around and do menial tasks like pick up paper? Why would he do that? He did truly love Ole Miss. If you were to cut Chancellor Kayat, he would bleed our, uh, red and blue. There's no doubt. He loves Ole Miss. Why else do you think Dr. Kayat picked up? Did, let me ask you this first. You, you're next, okay? Remember that answer. Don't lose it. Did he have to do it? Was it in his, was it in his job description? This is no. This is yes. Okay, no. Very good. Thank you. I can see that. Okay, why else do you think he did it? Because he thought of Ole Miss as his home and he was taking ownership of that. Yes, that was good. Did you hear that O word she just said? Ownership. You got relationship, you got ownership. What did Dr. Kayat believe in? He believed in Ole Miss. So if you were a part of Ole Miss, guess what he believed in? He believed in you. I came here 
from Florida. He didn't really know me that well, but he, he recruited me here. And he invested in me. The first week I was here, we walked the campus. And he transferred his passion and his knowledge of, and love for Ole Miss to me. He gave me that. I'm an Auburn guy, okay? I went to school at Auburn, okay? That'd be like you guys trying to like University of Alabama, okay? You just, it just doesn't work, right? But when he, when he shared the passion, I became an Ole Miss fan. You're going you're gonna to ask me when the two play together, who do I pull for? Okay, I pull for Auburn, okay? <laughs> Unless Ole Miss is doing better, then I pull for Ole Miss. Okay, and everybody hates me when I say that. But I love them both. It's like having children. You love them both. I love both. But Dr. Kayat would say things like, you don't have to have a lot of money. You just need to make the place look loved. You need to make the camp. We need to make this campus look loved. He says, I want it to be five star. I want it to be the best. And you know what? I thought that was great until I looked at the budget and I realized the budget was only a one star budget. And I said, oh, no, how are we going to do this? But he had a strong belief. Now, he's written a book. I don't know. I highly encourage you to re get his book. But there were some couple of takeaways that I had with Dr. Kaya, questions that I asked myself. Do you want to be successful? After meeting with Dr. Kayat, seeing his style, these were the things that I reflected on later, is did I want to be successful here at Ole Miss? And the answer, and I think the answer for you would be yes. The second part is, is you've got to know what success is to you. My success and your success may not be the same thing, okay? But I wanted to be successful, meaning I wanted Ole Miss to be the best. I wanted Ole Miss landscaping to be the best of the best. And so then I asked, my quest, asked the question, what level of success do you want? What level of success do you want? Because I was already pretty successful in, in what I was doing. I was in Florida working at a high-end resort, and I didn't, need to, I didn't need to leave. But when I came to Ole Miss, I saw a challenge and I saw an opportunity. And it, if it wasn't for Dr. Kayat, I would have never come. It was his passion. It was his love. And it was his belief in Ole Miss that attracted me here. Don't underestimate your belief. Whatever you're believing in, if it's a company you're starting, if you believe in it, people will follow you because you have passion for it. If your faith is strong and you believe, have strong faith, people will be attracted to that because of that strong belief. Don't underestimate that. And then here's another question. Do you want your organization to be successful? There are, I've met a lot of individuals who want to be successful in the organization but could care less if the organization was successful. Those are ego-driven leaders. They want their area, their spot in the spotlight and get the glory. But it's another thing to say, do you want the organization? Dr. Kayat wanted everybody to be successful. So ask yourself this question. You're going through this program. Do you want the person to your left and to your right to be successful? I know you want to be successful, but are you willing to help that person be successful? Okay, then everybody right now, get out your wallet, give them a $10 bill, right? No, I'm just kidding, okay? He said, well, it was fine until I had to make that commitment, Jeff, okay? <laughs> That's hard. It's hard because a lot of times you'll find you have to put your pride aside to help others. Here's the last question. Are you willing to do what others are not? Are you willing to do what others are not? You're in school right now. I applaud you. You are doing things that others are not doing. You're giving up time. You're giving up income right now. You may have friends right now that are killing it, making money, and you're investing in yourself. Well done. But when you get out of school and you, when you walk across that stage and you get that diploma or however they're doing it when you graduate, What's next? At what level do you want to be at? 
Because a lot of people quit looking for work once they get a job. A lot of people quit looking for work when they get a job and they do just enough to get by. Not Dr. Kayat. It was the temptation. He had arrived. He was the top. But he saw that chance to make an impact on Ole Miss, on the state of Mississippi, and the country. What's your goal? Don't think too small. Don't think too small. Be challenged to what your belief could be. Your belief in yourself. Trust me. Self-doubt is normal. Thinking you don't have it, whatever, low confidence, that's okay. That's normal. All of us go through that. But do you believe you are here for a reason? I can tell you yes. Those, those women would not have picked you. You would not have qualified. You are here. You are here for a reason. Okay. Dr. Kayat. Now, this is a picture of me with my staff. This was a couple of years ago. We were walking in a, I don't know if you ever know, heard of Callaway Gardens in Georgia, but it's a, it's a, I don't know if it's even still open. It's a beautiful botanical garden there. These are some of my folks. Uh, two of them have retired. Uh, Jeff Mason's retired. Denise Hill's retired. Sam Johnson's still working with us. These folks, most of these folks had never spent much time outside the county, much less the state. And Dr. Kayat challenged me to take our staff to places to inspire them. Places that they could see landscaping the way we wanted to do it at Ole Miss. Dr. Kayat was showing me how to transfer belief. And I didn't even know it. He was showing me how to build leaders, how to build other people's confidence by taking them on a journey with me. So we loaded up the vans and we would go to these places. We would go to other universities. We would see all kinds of things. And, and even now today, we still do this because sometimes we have to show people a bigger picture. Okay, so as a leader and you're building relationships and you're getting people to know, there's no greater way of getting to know each other than spending van time together. Okay, and going out to eat together and doing things. And this is what changed us from last place in landscaping to national championships, is investing in each other. We started hearing each other's dreams. We started talking about our goals, and things began to gel. And then, you know, having mentors to speak into our lives. You know, having Dr. Kayak call me and challenge me in areas to look at areas on campus that how we could do it better things like this it was you, you just never know who is going to be that person to speak into your life and so real quick this lady right here this is denise hill she's retired she was one on the, the, the slide a couple of slides before denise was running a weed eater when i came here and she was doing it great she was at she had just been hired and she was sort of she was at the bottom of the of the food chain so to speak and and i kept noticing her because of her great attitude. She'd be sweating, working hard, but she always smiled. She always engaged in conversation. She built a friendship and a, a relationship with her uh, people around her and with me. When she came in in the morning, she wasn't grumpy. She didn't expect us to to you know get out of her way she served she helped she was a part of it and after about two or three months i realized she's kind of a diamond in the rough she's kind of one of those people who could really potentially be a future leader and we didn't have a a depart a, a crew that goes around and plants the beautiful flowers you see and and trims the bushes we had a bunch of guys that like to drive lawnmowers but we didn't have a, a crew so i asked denise i said denise would you, be, would you consider stepping up to be a supervisor and, and, and running a crew? And you would think she would say, yes, absolutely, more money. But she, she said, not really. And this is, the ch this is the, what we run into, is we don't have the confidence in ourselves and we don't see ourselves in that next level. 
See yourself at what that next level is. You're not going to be students forever. Go ahead and start seeing yourself at what you're going to be doing. You don't have to, you don't have to visualize some kind of cra crazy weird thing, but you're not going to be here forever. And what is that next step? Visualize shaking hands with that future employer or that future banker or who, whatever you're going to be, that you're going to be successful. Two important people talking. And so I challenged Denise and said, I think you should try it. Why don't you just try it and see how it goes? So we let her do a little trial. She did wonderful. She did a great job. So she, long story short, she became a supervisor. A few years later, we got some more responsibility. We got the airport, we got the golf course. Things were growing. The chancellor, we were, the chancellor was raising a lot of money. The university was in doing a lot of projects. And I said, Denise, I need somebody to run day-to-day -day operations and landscaping. I need somebody who can be a supervisor to the supervisors. I need a superintendent. I said, I think you'd be a, a great person to do that. Now keep in mind, Denise is the only female in our department. And she goes, I don't think so. She goes, that's just, that's too much. And I don't, you know, I don't know if I feel comfortable being the supervisor to the person who used to be my supervisor. I said, why don't we try it? Why don't we just give it a test run? And she stumped her toe a few times and she, she scrub, scrubbed her knee and scraped her knee and she had a few mishaps, but she kept getting up and she did wonderful. And for many, many, many years, she ran this campus. She won many national awards under her name. Somebody in this room will be, in, you'll be investing in a Denise. You're gonna feel that great reward. Right now, just like you had said earlier, they're investing in you. The people are investing in you. You want to do your job so well that people are proud. And, and this quote means so much uh, to our department. But it was said years ago, if a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep the streets as Michelangelo painted, or Beethoven composed music, or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep the streets so well that all the host of heaven and earth will pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. And that's from Martin Luther King Jr. And I love, the reason I love that is because when you're dealing with sometimes what we may consider a menial task, if you believe it's menial and you believe it's beneath you, it will be. You've got to believe whatever you're doing is important and it helps serve a greater cause. When our team is out picking up garbage or cleaning up, it's easy for them to think, well, I'm just doing this. But as a leader, I need to make sure that I show belief in them that what they're doing is important. Folks, you're going to be those leaders. You're going to be in positions where you're investing into others and you're showing them how important their role is. You see, Dr. Kayat, when he hired me, made me feel important. You go to many campuses across America and you talk to guys who are doing what I'm doing and they don't feel like anybody cares about them. They don't feel like they're, they just feel like they're at the bottom of the food chain. And so you're getting, and you're, you want to have great teams. Here's a great book uh, that I encourage you to get, The Captain Class. And there was a study done that analysis of the greatest pro sport teams in history found that captains are critical to a team's success. Best captains play for their teams and not their own ego. Uh, another great book is No Bad Teams, Only Bad Leaders. This is, this is probably, if you, when you get into leadership role, this is one that you need to read or listen to. I listen to a lot of audio books. It's called Extreme Ownership. That was a word that you had used earlier was ownership. And how do you get people to care? How do you get people to have passion to clean up the campus. You see, because you remember earlier, I told you that we had a challenge with the employees hiding. Find them in the bushes, smoking cigarettes. Find them looking for deer and just dumpster diving. 
if you get extreme ownership where people care, then you come up with this, you come up with great results. And uh, Zig Ziglar tells us you can get everything in life you want if you'll help enough other people get what they want. Give people a belief. Give people a belief in themselves. 62% of prospective college students, when they come to a college campus, will decide in the first few minutes if they are going to go to that university. And they usually base that on a couple of things. One is the landscaping. Another is how clean it is. And so we tell our staff this, that you may be recruiting. We're cultivating greatness every time we go out and do work. But you may be recruiting the next, you know, Bill Parson, who, who went to school here in our engineering department and went on to run NASA. We may have helped recruit him. Who knows, we may be recruiting the next Patrick Willis, uh, all-American football player, played for the 49ers. We've had f our football coaches come down and tell our staff that what they do is critical to the recruiting at Ole Miss. You see, we're not landscaping, we're really recruiting. Or maybe we're recruiting guys like John Gresham who write great bestsellers. Or maybe we're recruiting people like Dr. Hannah Gay who came within a whisper of curing HIV. You see, that gives people purpose. There's three things that people that really motivate people. And if you read the book, Daniel Pink's book, Drive, you'll know the three things. One is if you can give people a purpose, a bigger reason why you're cleaning up the mess, why you're pulling weeds, why you're doing all that you do, give them a purpose. This is one of the purposes we share with our staff. Another thing that motivates people is you can give them some autonomy that they have control over this, their time and space. And then the third is let them become masters. Let them become the master of their area. In other words, let them be the expert. Let them be the top dog. And let me tell you, we work really hard to get our staff to be the top dog and knowing what they're doing. So how we, we raise the results, and here's another book, a great book, Atomic Habits. Habits are more important than goals. And, I, and, and this is really, really a great book as far as sharing that. It raised a, sh a story of the English Olympic team, and they had uh, never won any major medal for over 78 years. They had not won an Olympic medal, they had not won, won the Tour de France, and they were really not good. And sponsors did not want to sponsor the, t the bicycle team, the cycling team from England, because they were known as not winning. They were known as losers, okay? So they couldn't get even sponsors. 76 years, I said 78, I think, not, had not won a significant race. In 2008 to 12, Great Britain won seven out of the 12 gold medals. The last six of the Tour de France as they won. Why the change in their success? Well, let's look at that real quick. How they raised the results. One, they changed the leader. They reviewed every aspect of their process and they changed and modified and improved everything. They kept their eye on the big picture. It's kind of cool. Here's what some of the things they did. By experimenting with wind tunnels, they took the team truck in the back of the truck, they painted it white so they could see any impurities and get rid of those. They hired surgeons to teach them how to wash their hands. They had precise food prep, and they brought their own mattresses to sleep on. The little details took them over the top to amazing results. Never underestimate the little details. When Dr. Kayat was walking and picking up paper, he was looking at the details. You and I so, so often can overlook some of the details. And so I have to make sure on campus that we're looking at the details. Is the, are the edges at a 90 degree? Do, are we mowing so that there, we're not leaving these little spurs of grass? Are we tucking in the pine straw? Doesn't that sound funny? Are we making sure the flowers are spaced correctly so that everything works together to create national championship results? You see, you got to work together. You got to help each other out. And so knowing that and having people investing in it, making sure the weed eaters don't scalp the ground and that they're cutting the same height that the mowers do. Preparation, getting ready for the grove. You know, this took us to uh, building collaboration. The grove really helped us. And I, how many of you enjoy hanging out in the grove? 
Okay, unfortunately, we didn't get to have the tailgating this year, but maybe next year, maybe this coming year, we'll have it. But you, how many of you know Trash Can Friday, right? Yeah, Trash Can Friday, that's us, woo, you know? So game day, I'm sure every, everybody been to a game day? Okay, hopefully you have, and of course you can see the team walking through here, hopefully, and they're coming through, and sometimes we've had game day here, and uh, SEC sports, but I don't know if you've ever worked with us after the game. Any of you here worked with us after the game at all? Okay. Well, usually they leave us a few happies after the game over, okay? And so they, they uh, just forget their tent sometimes and leave them. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a few things. Uh, some, if you're hungry, you know, we can always get you set up with some platters that have been on the ground and all kind of interesting, fun stuff. And let me tell you, our staff would come in a f when we first started doing this. And the morale, they took such pride in the, in the property, in the university, and they came in. What do you think it did when they saw this? And then they had to clean it up. Y'all shaking your heads no. What does that mean? Yeah, it felt horrible. Why? Why would you feel horrible about that? I mean, that's their job. Their job's to clean it up. A disrespect. Yeah, you just feel, you just feel gut punched. And so we had to figure out a different way to do this to make it a win. How could we do this and not feel like a gut punch? How do we feel this and not be disrespected? Because we knew this was going to happen. It's part of nobody means for this to happen. It's just part of the culture. It's part of something. But let me tell you, when you haul out 90 tons of garbage from the grove, that's a lot of garbage. Okay, and recycles. That's a lot. So we had to... Uh, we had to go on offense. We had to change it. So what we did is we did what Dr. Kayat was so good at, is we got people around the table and we believed in them and we asked them for solutions. How can we change this? And one of the, one, now this was our frontline team of landscapers and one of them says, hey, why don't we close the, the grove on Saturday and nobody could tailgate? And we all laughed, right? Because you ain't doing that unless you got corona, and that wasn't even around back then. And so he said, well, somebody said, well, what if we uh, bid it out and let a contractor do it? So we put it out for bid. We, we asked contractors to give us a price to clean up the grove, and it was all great until we realized nobody bid on it. And so we said, well, that's a problem. So somebody came up with another idea from our team of people that we believed in, and they said, what if we ask a nonprofit group like some of our student groups that are raising money if they want to help clean up. And we didn't think that'd work, but guess what? We tried it and it worked. So we reached out to our first group was the Baptist Student Union. And they came, they brought 80 college students. What had normally taken us 10, 12 hours to clean up, they brought 80 people. We had the entire grove cleaned up in about an hour, to hour and a half. Amazing and they earned money for doing it. Our costs dropped. We got to give them some money, and they got to use it for mission programs and other things, and they got to be a, a great example for the community. So then we started you know, looking at what other organizations like Disney was doing. Hey, what does Disney do? And, and we realized that Disney has a great culture, but they do it, on, how many of you have ever got the great opportunity to go to Disney World or Disneyland? few of us? Okay. Is it a happy place? It's the happiest place on the on earth. That's right. Do what? Yeah. <laughs> and so there's 85,000 employees. Do you think all of them woke up happy this morning? No. But how does Disney, what do you do? Just walk up to people and say, you're going to be happy today. You're working with us today, and you're going to be happy whether you want to or not. Does that work? No. Y'all know, know that doesn't work. So they had to train how to be happy, how to train staff. Well, what we learned from Disney was they have a program called Disney University where they onboard their people. And we just start thinking about that. Could we do that in landscaping? Could we create something, smaller version? And so we looked at that. And then we, we looked at the Army and how the Army did things. And they had such excitement with young recruits and people willing to do things. It was like, how do they get buy-in? They don't pay their people hardly anything. How do they get such great buy-in? And they, they, they really focus on those, the core values and get breaking people down, but then building them up as a team. 
And so we, we had some people come and speak to us on that. I'm going to share, what we, share with you in just a second what we did. Then we looked at Chick-fil-A. Anybody Chick-fil-A fans in here? I could eat there seven times a day, okay? Love Chick-fil-A, but what we noticed was that they had a different type of customer service. They would say, you would say, thank you, and they would say what? My it's my pleasure. Did you know they didn't, you, they didn't come up with that? Did you know that? Do you know where they got that? Ritz Carlton. Whoops. That's, they got that from Ritz Carlton. What's Ritz Carlton? Anybody know? Yeah, super high dollar f hotel chain. The Marriott owns them now. But that was there. They were, interact with guests. Chick fil A had some of their retreats there, and they heard that. Truett Cathy, who started Chick fil A, says, I think that would be cool to do in our Chick-fil-A restaurants. So we started trying to learn from the Ritz-Carlton. We see, because we wanted to see how they did these things. So we created this thing called Landscape University. We sort of copied Disney. We sort of copied what Ritz-Carlton was doing. And we came up with our, our basic classes and levels and, and put our people through it so that we got on the same page. We created opportunities. You see, you can wait for opportunity, and it'll come maybe one day, or you can create opportunities. And we chose this way to be very proactive and create opportunities. Then we created a leadership development class. And so what we've done is we've taken our core values, and we've created this, these leadership medals that we, we, you can get in a volunteer program. And so you can look at this. I, I probably won't pass it around since we're all supposed to not touch COVID things and stuff. So we have each pin representing a part of leadership. And you can take, go through the class, do the class on your own and get a pin and be looked at for potential promotion. So leading by example, you know, we have, there's, there's kind of the things that we do and and then adapt and overcome, that's another leadership goal. And then eye for detail, do they have, developing their eye for detail, just creating these little programs to develop people. And then, you know, we, we wanted to expose our people to what winners look like. Most of our staff really had not been exposed to leadership training and how to think like a leader. And when you get out of school, you've gotta be careful because you're not gonna be around this great nurturing environment? How are you gonna keep flourishing? How are you gonna keep cultivating? How are you gonna keep blooming like a flower? See, because if you're a cut flower and you're on a table, a cut flower will last how long on a table? With water. Give me a guess. Maybe a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks, but eventually it does what? It wilts up and it dies. See, that can be, don't let that be you when you leave school. Be the plant that's blooming flowers. Stay connected. So we started getting our people reading books. Can you believe this? We had landscape, we got our landscape people reading books. And we got doing videos and doing TEDx talks and going places. And we're even taking them to the local library and showing them how to check out books. We're exposing them to different teachers. Les Brown, great motivational speaker. We're doing the, uh, the leadership program with our pens, and we had Terry Johnson from the U.S. Army come and speak to us. And Terry challenged us. He loved our landscape university, loved everything we're doing. And Terry said, Jeff, y'all are missing something in here. He goes, and when I, when I was in the Green Beret, he says, Terry, he says, when I was in the Green Beret, we had a creed, and we said the Green Beret creed. And I'm telling you, he quoted that creed right there. I'd never heard it before. But I tell you, it gave me goosebumps hearing him quote the Special Forces Creed. And I'm like, dude, that's, that's powerful. That's powerful. So, so we started working on what we now call our landscape creed. And so if you don't mind, I'm going to share that landscape. I had somebody here who was going to pass out. Uh, I have some papers. Could y'all pass those out now? Jonathan, would you pass those out, please? You, okay. And if ever, ever I'm going to give you a, a creed right now to take home, but it says, uh, we, the Department of Landscape Services, our team, just pass out, just hand them out, just don't worry about counting them, just throw, you know, if we've got any extras, we'll, we'll, get, we'll collect them. 
we, the Department of Landscape Services, are a team of hardworking individuals united under one banner and dedicated to inspiring others. Oh, let me tell you this. I didn't make this up. Guess who, guess who, guess whose words these are? Dr. Kayat believed in me. He believed in our department. And then we ask our staff to believe in themselves. And we ask them, what do you want to be known for? So ladies and gentlemen, when I share this with you, I share this with sincere appreciation for our team, but also with a, a sense of humbleness and a sense of pride, but, but mostly a, a sense of reverence. We say this every Monday morning together as a team. These are our core values. This came from our staff. We lead by example. We adapt and overcome. We never stop training and growing. We dedicate ourselves to professional integrity. We serve with respect and pride, cultivate greatness, achieve quality results with an eye for detail, promote and provide a beautiful environment, excel through high standards and excellence within, I am a landscape rebel. Now, if you look, most of you probably noticed that, that says landscape down the sign. There, for each line, lead by example, there's a pin. And they can go and get that pin. And so they can earn that and become a landscape leader. So just wanted to share that with you. That's your card to take. So accept your challenge. You're going to feel like at times that you can't do it. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were stronger. You're in this grind right now for a reason. This is going to help your discipline, help you organize and get planned. And when somebody dumps on your parade and in your grove, know that that's going to be actually lemons turned into lemonade. You know, you never know. You go from chumps to champs to winning national awards and national recognition. And last of all, make sure you always give others the credit for your success. Folks, thank you for letting me be here. Thank you for what you do. You will honor me and, and you will honor those who have invested in you by believing in yourself and investing in others as well. Thank you very much. Hey, I've got some, does anybody do face chills? You know, like cover, you know, like these are cool ones. These are, you won't get these in a store. These are landscapey ones. And really, I'm not supposed to give them to you, but I can't, I'm going to do it anyway. Does, any, does, it, does anybody do the pullover face shield at all or no? If you don't do it, you don't have to. In the back? Oh, whoa, that's pretty cool. I should have done that earlier. Anybody else? This is the best part. I got some more. Does anybody else want any? You want which one? 